was looking for another intro. Hey, what is happening? It's another math video. And it's back to let's go math. Yeah, go math. We need a chant. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Anyway, we have lesson 8.4, which is basically fraction and whole number division. Let's take a look at our essential question. Our essential question states, how can you divide fractions by solving a related multiplication sentence? Now, I know we've done this before. We did it with Eureka. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and do this real world application, as I like to say, unlocking the problem. Now, it's really important you focus because I know that these lessons can get very challenging. So when you're watching the video, I know, please don't get bored. Don't say, Mr. Wara, I'm really bored. No, say, yes, I can. And I can focus. It says three friends share a quarter pound package of beads equally. What fraction of a pound of beads does each friend get? Okay, well, it says here we could divide. One quarter divided by three. Since this is our dividend, that's how many beads we have, and we're dividing it equally with three friends, which is listed here, that's our expression. Let the rectangle, uh, bleh, let the rectangle, just learning to speak today. Uh, let the rectangle represent one pound of beads. All right, I see a rectangle down there. Got it. And it says divide the rectangle into fourths and then divide each fourth into three equal parts. All righty. So this is what they've done here. They, oh, they're even going to show you that there. So you have your, your quarter pound. This would be like, if we were to do it in my way, this whole thing is one pound. And they're asking you to just mark off the quarter pound. Use the one whole. Makes it easier when it comes to fractions. Now since the rectangle is now divided into, well, if we have three equal friends, you could do this any which way. I'll do it this way across, just so you can see it really doesn't matter, up or down. The rectangle is now divided into, well, if we kept going across, which is what we'd want to do here, put a few extra lines in there. Now you can see we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's divided into twelve equal parts. You see how we did that? No trickery, my friends. When you divide one fourth into three equal parts, you are you are finding one of three equal parts or one third of one fourth. Shade one third of one fourth. Well, okay. If we were going to divide finding one third of one fourth. That would be this part right here. I guess that would be a shading, right? And this shaded part is one twelfth of the whole rectangle. Cool, cool, huh? Huh, huh, huh? Yeah, I think that's cool. Complete the number sentence. One quarter divided by three then equals, brings us back to one, or oh, gives us one twelfth. Well, they actually turn the division sentence into a multiplication sentence. And we can check our work like you've seen in other occasions where we can take our 1 12th now as the quotient and multiply that by the divisor, giving us 3 twelfths. And then we can reduce that to 1 fourth because the common factor of 3. This is easy. So each friend gets 1 twelfth of a pound of beads. Okay? So are we okay? Yeah? My goodness, is that already one page? We're just flying through this stuff here. What does it say down here? Example, Brad has nine pounds of ground turkey to make turkey burgers for a picnic. It says, how many one-third pound turkey burgers can he make? All right. That says, will the number of turkey burgers be less than or greater than nine? Think about that. We have nine pounds of tur ground turkey. And it says, how many one-third pound turkey burgers can he make? So... The turkey burgers are less than one pound, so it's less than one whole. So will the number of turkey burgers be less than or greater than nine? Well, you probably would know right away that it would have to be greater than. It would have to be greater than because you're taking a, an amount smaller than your whole number. You're taking one-third. Okay, nine divided by one-third then. So draw nine rectangles to represent each pound of cow turkey, I guess that's done for us. Divide each rectangle into thirds. We could do that. 
divide them into thirds. And I'll do my dotted line. Okay, so I'm showing my, my dotted lines here. So you can see that this is one third here. I shouldn't say one third, but I've divided this in two thirds. There we go. So now I've shown my rectangles. They've all been divided okay, into thirds. This is when you divide the, and there's going to be nine rectangles into thirds, you are finding the number of thirds in re nine rectangles or finding nine groups of three. Therefore, there will be 27 thirds. And I'll complete the number sentence. Well, we have nine divided by one third then is going to equal is equal to nine times three, which is equal to twenty seven. I almost wrote a twenty seven here because we have three uh, uh, thirds in one hole here, and we have nine of them, so that would be twenty seven. Way to check our work is again to take that twenty seven, just multiply it to one third. We end up with twenty seven over three, which does equal nine. It's a way of checking our work. So Brad can make. 27 one third pound burgers. Yeah. Woohoo. Right down. Move. Next page. Ding. Okay. And what do we have hiding? Dun, 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 dun. No, I don't think there's anything there, is there? Woo. Thank goodness. All right. It says connect. You have learned how to use a model and write a multiplication sentence to solve a division problem. We just did that. Uh, here are some examples. Okay. Let's do the examples. One quarter divided by two is equal to one eighth. If you have a quarter and you're dividing it by two, yes, it equals one eighth. So one half times one quarter equals one eighth. Okay, that's what we just did. Here we have four, is there more samples? Okay, okay, look at example A. I guess they just want us to see this. So we have four, I guess those are the four. Okay, divided by one half, okay, so four times two equals eight. Okay, there's anything to do there that I can see. Uh, look at example A. Describe how the model shows that dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. Okay, looking at the model, how would that be true? Now, let's reread that. I need to reread that. Describe how the model shows that dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. Well, the model shows that here, one quarter divided into two, okay, equal groups is one eighth because they put that line across is showing that in half. Okay. We had we had a quarter of that whole. Now we've divided that and it's showing that now that is one eighth, not one quarter any longer. Okay, the model shows that one quarter divided into two equal groups is one eighth. And it also shows that one half of one quarter is one eighth. There we go. All right. Now look at example B. Describe how the model shows that dividing one half is the same as multiplying two. Okay. Well, it's basically the same. It's the same explanation, just with a different problem. See here, the model shows that there are eight halves, that's how many halves we have, in one, two, three, four holes. So it shows that four groups of two is eight. All right, well, let's go ahead and write that down. Let's see, I said, okay, the, all right, so what did we say? So the model up there, the model uh, shows uh, that there um, are, we, we said there are eight, halves, uh, you spell L-V-E-S, there we go, in four holes, and it shows that uh, four groups of two is eight, all right? Oh, here we go, more problems here. So when you divide by whole numbers greater than one, the quotient is always less than the dividend. Think about, for example, the quotient for six divided by two is less than six, and the quotient for two divided by three is less than two. So again, it's saying if you divide by whole numbers greater than one, which both of these were the case, we were dividing by whole numbers, 
that were greater than 1, then the quotient is always less than the dividend. And that's been true. Learn below how the quotient compares to the dividend when you divide fractions and whole numbers. So let's, let's just try this. For the two expressions below, which will have a quotient that is greater than its dividend? Explain. Okay, well, it just told us up here the quotient for the 6 divided by 2 is less than 6, and the quotient for 2 divided by 3 is less than 2. I mean, the answer to that division problem. And basically, it just says when you divide by whole numbers, if you're divided by a whole number that's greater than 1, 6 is greater than 1, 2 is greater than 1, the quotient is always less than the dividend. See, in this case, that's not true. 1 half divided by 3, 1 half is less than 1. So in this case, 1 half divided by 3 is like taking that, that half and we're breaking up into thirds. So this is going to equal 1 sixth. Okay? If we took that times the 3, you'd see that we'd end up with 1 half. Where here we have 3 wholes and we're dividing by 1 half. So we're taking 3 and we're creating halves. So 3, in this case, we're going to end up with 6. 6 times 1 half is equal to 6 over 2, which is equal to 3. So it brings us back. So my answer would be, yeah, 3 divided by 1 half since my quotient uh, represents the number of, we'll say, of parts. In this case, it was halves that make up, got stuck together there, make up um, the actual, the whole number. I'm just going to use that as abbreviation, which was 3. That was our whole. The number of parts will be greater, greater than the dividend or whole number. All right, Ooh, that's a lot. So when I divide a fraction by a whole number greater than 1, the quotient, it, oh, ooh, that was slightly across there. Uh, the quotient is less, so this is fraction by a whole number that's greater than 1. The quotient is less than, okay, so saying, so when I divide a fraction, like here, fraction by a whole number greater than 1, the quotient is less than the dividend, which is what happened here. 1 6 became less than 1 half. But when I divide a whole number, by a fraction less than 1, the quotient is greater than. Now, I know this could be confusing. My goodness, teaching this is a bit confusing because they keep using the terms quotient, dividend, whole number, fraction, and I know that could be really confusing. And the best thing that I can suggest for you is you read this carefully. Always think when you divide a fraction by, whenever you have that word by, it lets you know that's words the divided. So if you have your whole number on this side, so this is when you divide a whole number by a fraction. That might help you understand that a little bit better. All right. And you know what, my friends? Oh my goodness, is that the end? It is. What a short video. Yes. I feel like there should have been something really spectacular in, well, you know what, every math video from Mr. War is pretty spectacular, no? <laughs> Hey, just kidding, just kidding, okay. Anyway, please, no throwing any fruits and stuff at me here. Well, folks, it is time to sign off. But like I always say, live long and prosper, my friends.